Hello and welcome back to PSD Task Plus and the Shortcut series. I'm Martin Perhiniak and today we are going to talk more about the retouch tools. We already discussed the basics, how to work with the clone stamp tool and the healing brushes properly and also how to combine them. So now today I would like to talk more about the clone stamp tool and the clone source panel. So, as I said, the clone stamp tool is much more advanced than the other retouch tools, mainly because we have the clone source panel together with it. As you can see here, we have so many options, and mainly what I would like to show you today is how to use the sampling, different sampling options, and also these offset options here. So, I would like to first of all show you, if I go back to the same example that we did previously in another episode that I'm going to um, copy and paste this haystack and turn aligned option off and make a new layer which I call retouch layer and start drawing the haystack I can create as many duplicates of it as I want but if I always do exactly the same I mean, keep it exactly the same as it was, it will be less uh, believable, even though we are using a soft edge brush to blend it into its uh, environment. So what I want to do is, before actually uh, drawing the sample, I am going to go to the clone source panel, and here I am going to flip horizontal uh, the whole source, okay? So turn that on, and then when I start drawing this haystack, it will be turned around. So it will be the opposite as the other one. And if I go back now again, I can click on rotating the haystack and there, there will be a preview which shows us how it looks. Okay, so rotate it, flip it back and maybe make it smaller. If I click on W or H, I can drag the size down and now I can draw a smaller one, maybe somewhere here in the background. So you can see now we used two new versions of the same haystack one of them was flipped around the other one was rotated a bit and also made smaller i can make it even smaller if i go back to w and drag it down and then if i start drawing it here somewhere in the background i can draw another version of it but much uh, smaller and again i can make it bigger as well that will be a bit more pixelated than the original one but maybe we can still try to draw it here in the foreground. Let's just draw over this part here and add our original haystack. And as you can see, we can make it bigger, smaller, flip it around. And we can also use blend modes together with the clone stamp tool. So if I set the blend mode to screen, for example, and I change the opacity, let's say to something like 20, and I draw over this detail again, Okay, now let me just draw over it again. I can brighten it as well. So that's also a very useful option. If I keep it aligned, I can draw it over again and make it even brighter. So you can use blend modes and the clone source panels offset options to improve the clone stamp tools features. But we can also sample from an image and clone it into another image. And that's where we have these different clone sources. So I have the first clone source now from background one, and I am going to still use it from here. I am going to alt click here in the grass. So somewhere here, as you can see, this is from background one back JPEG. And then I go to the other image here. Okay, let me zoom a bit closer. Again, I create a new layer and I call that layer retouch always working non-destructively whenever I can. I set the blend mode back to normal and the opacity up to 100%. And then if I start drawing here, you can see we could sample from a different image and draw it into another image. So I just create a nice uh, green part here in this image. So we sampled from this photo and use the clone sam tool on the other one because the clone source panel can still reference from that image if it stays open in Photoshop. You have to keep it open. And if I select the second source 
and let's just say I select one of these mountains here in the background you can see now it's from selection one background so this one while the other one is still there so now I keep the second source selected I go back to the other image and I can start drawing the mountains into this image of course it won't look realistic because of the uh, colors of the two image but if I work a little bit uh, more on it I can make it look believable so you can see that by using the clone source panel you can really take advantage of all the extra or additional features of the, the clone stamp tool and before I finish let me just show you one more example very complicated retouch part here in this image I can get rid of everything or the destructive elements in the image like this and it will probably take me less than an hour using these retouch tools um, but let me show you the most difficult part this is probably where we have the scaffolding over the uh, building here so how can I get rid of that there are many ways of doing it but let me show you using the workflow that we already learned I first of all create a new uh, retouch layer and then I make a selection using the pen tool remember this we discussed in the previous uh, tutorial so I'm going to make a selection for this part of the roof I press command enter to uh, turn this path into a selection and then I'm going to use my clone stamp tool and I am going to sample probably from these bricks here let's just use these ones here okay but these are too big compared to the other one so I go to the clone source and make my sampling smaller something like 75 let's just check maybe a little bit even smaller yeah that looks good and rotate them around a bit rotate them to the right I click here on the rotation and drag it to the right maybe we can rotate it even a bit more something like that now I can start drawing it over and maybe sample again a bit further up from somewhere there so now I can draw and I am going to turn off aligned so I can use the same part again and again and draw over it so I basically create a pattern out of this if you keep aligned turned off it will almost work like a pattern and I'm going to draw over that part as well there even though I know there should be a shadow of the building but that I can do again with another selection I am going to use uh, my pen tool and make a selection of the part which I need to keep in shadows and when I press command enter I hold down alt as well so command or control alt enter that will make a selection and remove it from the other part so now I only have this selection and all I need to do is to burn this so I can use the burn tool and just simply go over it to make it darker something like that so now it looks like it's already in shadows so that part of the roof is done let me see before and after it looks quite good but we can still use the clone stamp tool and just get rid of details which just gives away that it has been retouched these standout details okay so it looks a bit better now maybe we can leave one there just to make it a bit more believable so it looks already much better now we can concentrate on this part here so I am going to make a selection here that's probably the edge of the building and then I am going to say this is the other edge and I just draw around this chimney here let me zoom a bit closer just to be a bit more accurate something like that okay turn it into a selection and now what we can do is to find a detail which can be used for this part um, I don't want to sample too close to it maybe this one could work but it's just too close and it will look fake because someone might see that I used exactly the same wall just very close to it so I need to look for something else and maybe this can work here on the right so I am going to alt click here on the edge okay and I am going to zoom closer to this and I would like to use that edge and start drawing over these details here so let's just see how it looks if I draw over inside the selection and because we had a rotation on the clone source it won't look good and I also need the align to be turned on 
So I am going to use the rotation and set the rotation into the correct angle. So you can see I align it to the edges of my selection. And then I also use the offset Y, I click on Y and drag it up until it reaches the edge and maybe drag the X around a bit as well. So I know that that selection edge is the edge of the building. So I will place the two windows accordingly. Okay, now I can start drawing over it again. I don't even have to erase it because I can just simply draw over it again. And something like that looks pretty good. Let me do, uh, make a deselect. Okay, that looks quite good. Maybe it's not completely straight, which I can always adjust. But for now, I think it, this will be fine. And we can always keep the selection on and just change the blend mode to multiply, send the, uh, set the opacity to 20% for the clone stem tool and just draw over some parts which we want to have a bit darker. So I don't know, I just make some parts a bit darker here at the bottom, especially um, there will be less light there. So something like that. Now, if we turn the retouch on and off, we can see what we achieved quickly and easily using the clone stamp tool together with the advantages of the clone source panel. So it's definitely something that you should look into and try to get used to working with these options. So offset with X and Y, the, the width and height and rotation. And of course, sampling from different images can be also interesting. And uh, remember, you have five different samples. So even the first sample, it, we still have that from a different image. And if I set my clone stamp tool up, you can see we we'll still have the grass. So we can draw over some part and use the grass from a different image. That's all I wanted to show you today. And if you want to learn even more about retouch tools, Join me next time when I'm going to talk about a very interesting topic, the content aware features of the retouch tools. Thanks a lot for your attention today and see you next time.